Hi, my name's Brian Hudson. This is just a quick video to walk you through what I believe to be the flow of money in the family court industry, um, the uh, domestic abuse and divorce industry. So uh, if this big wave here, this tsunami represents the family law industry and radical feminism, and over here, this uh, knight on the white charger represents the parental alienation campaigners. Um, well, in, in reality, um, that white knight is really many uh, dispersed and disparate and fractured groups, uh, all kind of heading in different directions, doing their own thing uh, or doing the same thing uh, and not enough uh, diverse projects because they're all generally unfunded, uh, run by volunteers and, um, you know, perhaps led by people that are looking to be the hero rather than work collectively with others uh, and, and get more done that way. Um, so, you know, what we've got here really is, you know, a tsunami coming at us and we're trying to um, counter that tsunami with with a horse um, and, uh, and, and essentially just the wrong equipment. So um, this next diagram really represents, um, you know, the monster in the middle being the, the monster of the family core. And I wanted to talk you through how the money is flowing. And um, so uh, if I just click on here, in, in on the right hand side there, what we've got is uh, the empty wallet representing alienated parents. Um, and of course, uh, we are wanting to see our children um, and have meaningful um, access uh, in their lives and, and opportunity to, you know, to, to get them to adulthood safely. Um, so we will uh, empty our wallets, we'll go to see divorce lawyers and um, we'll feed the family court monster with its fees. And of course, as we're running out of money, we go, you know, to our employer and we work really hard to get some more money and uh, when we get that money of course we're paying tax to um, you know to the government <clears throat> and uh, the more money we earn the more tax we're paying um, so the more we spend in divorce lawyer fees and family court fees the more tax we have to pay on that so that of course goes to the Ministry of Justice in funding or some of it does so the Ministry of Justice are getting their funding there um, the uh, government are also funding uh, the radical feminist movement through women's aid and the likes of refuge. Um, the Ministry of Justice are funding CAFCAS. So, you know, the idea of CAFCAS originally was to be an independent body, but they are, um, they come under the umbrella of the Ministry of Justice. So really they're just there to take the heat off judges. Um, and then, <clears throat> of course, we need to... Um, or well, we're put in a position where we have to start paying child maintenance. Um, so that will go off um, either directly from us to the child maintenance service or to our ex-partner or spouse, the, the, the other parent. Um, and uh, if, we, if we don't pay them directly, then the child maintenance service will just take that straight from our employer uh, or straight from our bank account. Um, and, you know, if they go to our employer or just take it straight from our bank account, they'll, of course, add another 20 percent on that. So we've got to find even more money. Um, so uh, then from the, from the divorce lawyers, uh, you know, or the family, you know, the family solic law solicitors, they'll, of course, be paying tax on all the money that we're paying them. Um, and they'll be, you know, of course, paying um, tax into the government. And the government, again, will then be paying that back out uh, to Ministry of Justice and to Women's Aid and to Refuge and, and organisations like that and to CAFCAS. Um, and, and so is the cycle. Um, and, of course, they're, they're feeding money directly into Ministry of Justice in fees as well. Um, and, of course, child maintenance on the surcharges that they are levying on top of uh, child maintenance to those who can least afford to pay um, their response to that is to is to increase the cost um, uh, and then send that uh, back to the government um, which you know seems pretty perverse to me um, 
And then, of course, you know, the Ministry of Justice, of course, keeps feeding this family court monster as well. So any time there is, you know, an uproar about how things are uh, are, are working, uh, the Ministry of Justice will go back to government and say, we need more money, we need more money. Uh, and they will grow the service to accommodate this never ending supply of parents who are battling over their children um, when they separate. It's now 88 percent of all divorcing parents with dependent kids are going to family court to battle it out. Whereas in the likes of Sweden, it's only 2%, um, 9% including all the financial issues, but 2% for, fin for, for children's arrangements, simply because there is a standard of equal parenting after separation. So that really puts into perspective exactly what's going on here. Um, so, um, of course, any surplus from the family court goes straight back into the uh, into the treasury. Uh, and then, of course, you know, we run out of money. So, you know, we get back onto our um, hamster wheel that you can see represented there at work. We need to earn more money. So we work harder and harder because we've run out. And the harder that we work, of course, the more money we send through our taxes over to HMRC and of course therefore we send more money across the child maintenance as well and that 20% surcharge goes up to and our ex or um, our, you know our ex-partner or ex-spouse or soon-to-be ex-spouse also gets more money and uh, and then uh, through child maintenance they're passing yet more money back to the treasury so all these people are getting pretty fat. And if you notice here that there's one common thing, and the one common thing is that the alienated parents are the ones doing all the paying. They're the ones subsidizing this entire industry. So if we look at um, you know, what we're up against, and I really don't think that any of us really have, have, have taken this fully on board, is the sheer size of the organisation and the vested interests that we are trying to campaign against for when we're trying to, to, to bring about change. So to the right here, you can see my, our, our lone soldier that represents all the alienated parents and the resources that we are left with to campaign with. And we're essentially fighting this army coming in, a, in the other direction, represented by, you know, the the feminist lobby movement, um, services for women, um, and the family law industry itself. Family law solicitors, of course, are earning a killing uh, that we are paying for. Um, and government who are funding Ministry of Justice through uh, increased levels of taxation that we are paying because we're working so goddamn hard in order to see our children. And whenever there is, uh, you know, um, an issue here and we're making a breakthrough they call for backup and they get more funding and um, we don't get any of that funding they just get more and more and more funding because they make claims that you know we as you know the the abusing or accused of being abusive parents um, are trying to um, undermine family court um, and uh, you know with the truth essentially so uh, they get yet more artillery and yet more numbers and yet more funding and yet more ability to buy media and yet more lobbying power and yet more access to parliament and the lords and yet more access to legislation um, and more ability to produce uh, bogus um, academic research uh, that they'll put in front of legislators and uh, things will get worse and worse and worse. So essentially that's where we're at. So um, let's have a little look at what our chances of success are when we go to family court. Well, looking at the numbers that we see through child maintenance service anyway, um, and, and how that pans out, um, the percentage of parents uh, that come out of, um, or alienated parents rather, who are having to go to court in order to, to get time with their children, the percentage of those that come away with equal time is about 2%. Um, the percentage that managed to come out with three nights a week is also about 
with two nights a week, it starts to get a bit better, about 7%. One night a week, 14%. Uh, but what's really scary is that absolutely no overnight contact at all or no contact at all is 75% of all alienated parents will walk away from family court with that being their result. So, you know, chances of success are pretty slim. Um, of course, they don't tell you that when you enter because you enter thinking this is the justice system. Uh, you know, they deliver justice. It's what we as taxpayers are paying for. It's what we expect from the legal profession. You know, we expect high standards. We expect integrity. Um, but we certainly don't see it once we're in it. So um, that that that's, should be quite sobering for anybody watching this. This is the reality uh, that you're funding. This is your likely chances of success. Um, and <clears throat> what that means is that, you know, after your court drama, you will be faced with paying out a lot of money in child maintenance, probably through the um, child maintenance service who, you know, for a third of cases will add on 20%. Um, and make it all the more difficult for you. And you may also have spousal maintenance to pay on top. So, you know, the question is whether this then is the right way to go. You know, do we have any hope of tackling a tsunami um, as, you know, Lone Ranger, um, you know, anything, but, you know, knights on a horse, um, you know, have we got the tools for the job? Um, and who, who would try to tackle a tsunami uh, on a horse anyway? Um, you know, so that's really the analogy I'm making. And, you know, the question is, we're not going to stop this wave. Um, it's causing a lot of destruction. It's going to cause a lot more destruction. Um, perhaps we need to learn to surf it, you know, so that we've got, you know, we're using a tool that's appropriate for the task at hand. Um, so that's the question I pose here once, you know, we are outline how the money is flowing. And then, you know, really the moral of this story is <clears throat> that we're producing all the money that is feeding this monster. And if we don't feed it so much money, the, the monster also has to shrink. Yeah. So let's shrink the money. And let's watch the monster shrink. Um, so we really need to start having a conversation about how we shrink the level of support that we, as the funding body, the collective funding body for Family Court, in order to destroy most of our lives in, in to some degree or other, for some period of time or other, we really need to be starting to think about um, whether we're prepared to continue doing that and what we're going to best use the money that we are using in order to fund our own destruction. Perhaps we need to think about how we better divert those resources from the outset. So the future, I think it's to undermine the system through withdrawing from it, um, at least for a period of time, or at least withdrawing from it in such a way that we are feeding it the extraordinary amount of money that we funnel into it. Um, and possibly we use that money to create an alternative system. You know, that's no small task, but we need to start thinking about that. Um, perhaps that is the way forward. Anyway, I hope that this, um, you know, gets the thinking, the thinking going. Um, and, you know, you're looking at it from a slightly different perspective, perhaps. And um, we can get an alternative discussion going around this. So that's all I have to say for now. Thanks very much for listening.